I'm with you. I mean, yeah. Okay. But I, I guess the, really the only fast food places I tend to go are like Cane's or Chick-fil-A. Yeah. If I'm in Slido, I go to Smalls. Ah! I was, <laughs> wait, I was waiting for it to happen. Listen, guys. I don't know who you think you're watching here, but if you are watching us, thank <laughs> this you. This is a... We're a... You know, we're fun. This is a low-grade production. We're fun. <laughs> we It's the it's the entertainment that counts, right? right. But this, this side note, this is going to be the worst quality podcast. It might be the most entertaining, like, speed, like what we're I talking about. I don't know if they can hear that. You don't think so? It is storming right now. We're sitting on the back porch. The camera's sideways. It's wet as hell out here. We're sitting in a swamp. Hey yo. What's up? Hey hey yo. We are back. Watch your feet. <laughs> you don't oh knock the camera over. Oh, uh, we're good. We're good. God, I can't even get into a podcast. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. What's up? <laughs> no, nah, we're good. Um What podcast number twenty eight? Twenty eight, the Keenan Lewis edition. Keenan Lewis. Mark Ingram. Rookie. Rookie year, Mark Ingram. Yeah, come on now. That's where I go with it. Um official podcast of stubborn people everywhere. Um Thank you for being you. It's your world. We just live in it. Cheers. Cheers. We, we uh <laughs> once once again tonight coming in, Dave sends me a text. Hey, you got any topics for tonight? I look at my phone and I'm like, this is a weekly. We need to, I wish we could do like a behind the scenes thing cuz it's weekly we come in with nothing. Yeah. If the, like, if the Pels haven't played or obviously this doesn't apply now, but if the Saints hadn't played or there's no major Saints news, we got nothing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's funny. And I was like, I was like, nope. And he's like, don't worry. Shit'll just, no, I think I said it. Shit'll just fall right. out of our mouth for I'll 45 be, minutes. It'll be fine. I'll tell them what I told you. To most people, most uh, more organized podcast would be, would panic about that. But for us, that's when we shine. Yeah, there's somebody out there that's like, yeah, that's why you guys fucking suck. <laughs> Maybe if you wrote some shit down, you'd be doing a little better. <laughs> <Right>. Speaking <laughs> of, where the fuck is my phone? Because it does have my topics on it. I wrote some shit down. Oh, well. <laughs> We are full on winging it. It's over there. I got it. <laughs> no, you don't have to grab it. I was I was gonna wing it. <laughs> we were gonna prove a point. We were gonna prove a point. Oh, you know what I did want to do? I don't even have to look at my phone to do that. Um, everybody knows. We mentioned it last week on the podcast. I joined a two K Pro Am league. Um, if you follow our Twitter, you saw. You, it. I was gonna <laughs> say. <laughs> if you follow the Twitter, Dave Dave went ahead and saw that we went live, and he was like, "Oh, what is this? Let me share it." And I was like, "God damn it." <laughs> We have never played. Um, it's me and like a couple of my buddies. We have never played Pro Am threes, and we just randomly decided to hop in a league. And let me just tell you, it was a shit show. You're um, speaking gibberish to me right now. It was a shit show. Just it's basketball. Just consider it basketball. Three on three basketball. Okay. It was bad. We lost. Would it make you feel better if I just got on there and started streaming, like me playing Call of Duty as like an average, an average player? No, um, it would not. But you know what would be fun? You would get the conversations between me and my friends at night, which are great. Yeah, that's true. See, I turn, I leave that off, but I could turn it on. It'd be fun. But no, you know what would be really fun? Is if we started doing like a weekly recap of how bad Patty sucks at 2K. That would be pretty dope. Do you want me to commentate your game? You could commentate. You could come in after, too. Like, we'd come in this. In this and you'd be like, so, Patty, I see you had a stat line of uh, three <laughs> points. You went one for three from the three-point line. Um you missed two easy dunks, and you got one rebound. What what happened? Post game interviews. Yeah. There you go. Dude, like, you know, new TikTok segment yeah. of me interviewing you. <laughs> you know, we fought really hard. Um, I thought I had some open looks, some good looks. I just didn't fall. You know, uh, we're gonna put some work in, and, and next time we're gonna have a better game. That's gonna be my <laughs> go-to go answer. Your back and ask your teammates how they feel about you. <laughs> <laughs> just cause some drama between the between I the almost, beignet bros. I almost got on there and uh, started streaming my Hogwarts uh, <laughs> gameplay. I beat the game already for anybody that is interested. I am now a master of the dark arts, and uh, it's been great. That is great. That's phenomenal. Have you Avada Kedavra'd anybody yet? Yeah, I did learn that. Hell yeah. Do you have to learn it first before you do it? Yes. Okay. I just want to get on there and willy-nilly just be like fucking... I keep seeing memes, too. <laughs> like, it's very... It's, they're hilarious. It's great. Um, 
I did have a rant. Can I rant for a second? Yes. Yeah, Always. there there will be sports on here. I know we started with games, and now I'm ranting about something. It gives a shit if there is or not. We so, very we very specifically say variety podcast. It is a variety. Nowhere podcast. on our page does it say sports. It's true. If you're here for sports, you'll get it. But <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. Um, fast food. This is my rant. Oh. Fast food. You eat fast food? Um, I mean, occasionally, like, I don't know if I just really don't feel like going get food from anywhere or something and i'm like on the way home and there's a like canes or something i might stop but it's like maybe once a month if that not often yeah not often at all two things i'll Unless get into you consider smoothie king fast food uh you know i actually had this thought too this this is a sidebar we'll go into this and then we'll get back to my story i was thinking this too on my drive home because i was thinking of the rant that i was going to bring up on the pod tonight um we talked about this before when we were ranking fast food places, I what think. Like, food? what is fast food? Because I was going to say, dude, I haven't been to a fast food place in, in five years, four years. Um, but I go to Starbucks multiple times a week. I go to PJ's. So, if you know, if any place with a window is considered fast food, then yeah. I'm out. But yeah. um, I don't know. I don't consider it Smoothie King fast I don't think food. so either. And even now, I, you know what? I started buying their protein from there. Like yeah. thing of protein. I just yeah. make them at home. But anyway. Anyways, back to my rant. Um, fast food is a scam. Okay. Full on scam, right? Okay. I learned this years ago and I thought, oh, it's just a Popeyes thing. Um, everybody knows Popeyes. It's, you know, best food in the world, but you're gonna wait forever. The service is gonna be terrible. You're just gonna get what they give you and you're gonna you're gonna move on with your life. Um tonight I go to Taco Bell for my wife. First mistake. First mistake. Okay. Well, she loves Taco Bell. We don't go often. Um, but this has been a theme of going to Taco Bell lately. I pull up. There's nobody in line. There's like three cars. Mm-hmm. I order. Mm-hmm. I get to the window. I pay. It's all quick. And they're mm-hmm. like, hey, can you pull around and we'll come out and we'll give you your food? Yeah, sure. Why not? I don't mind. Maybe it's going to take a minute. Got to keep that timer down. I got to. Fu- yeah, exactly. That's what it is. See, I worked fast food too at you one too. point. I know. You learned the I know tricks. how it is. Yeah. Well, I've worked at Wendy's for three years. <laughs> yeah. You get that shit off the screen. It makes it look better <laughs> for corporate. But but do better. Okay. You give me a fucking Pepsi, which I'm not going to drink. My wife, it's sitting in the fridge now because it's watered down. You give me a Pepsi, and then you make me go sit for 30 minutes Oof. waiting on two chalupas. The Pepsi's watered down. I could have went to fucking anywhere else and ordered a full meal, sat down, ate it, paid, left. That's yeah. it. That's my rant. Yeah. I could have gone deeper, but, you know, it's a scam. I don't think this is an all fast food thing. Though. It's it's my most fast food thing. You can thing. get through Chick Fil A drop through. Chick Fil A is not fa- Chick Fil A is fucking <laughs> abnormal as fuck. Like, we're not talking Chick Fil A here, okay? We're talking every other fast food place. Yeah, I. I'm with you. I mean, yeah. Okay. But I, I guess the, really the only fast food places I tend to go are like Canes or Chick Fil A. Yeah. If I'm in Slido, I go to Smalls. Ah! I was, waiting, I was waiting for it to happen. I was watching it. It's a little windy out here tonight, this folks. This is going to happen a couple times. I can already tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, turn it. Yep. All right. We're good. Anyway. We're good. This is a fucking... Listen, guys. I don't know who you think you're watching here, but if you are watching us, thank <laughs> this you. This is a... We're a... You know, we're fun. This is a low-grade production. We're fun. <laughs> we. It's the, it's the entertainment that counts, right? right? We'll get better with the video. Um... So going back to that though, I did cheat. I, I said that I haven't been to fast food. I haven't gotten fast food or eaten fast food in five years. I do eat Chick Fil A on occasion, like salads from Chick Fil A because my daughter loves Chick Fil A. My wife loves Chick Fil A, so like we'll run through there every now and then. Yeah, well, you, you, I'm sure you know this. When you have kids, like if they find a, if you find something they'll eat, oh, you yeah. just got to do it. Yeah. Like I know my son will eat Chick Fil A nuggets, so sometimes that's that's the only move. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, chicken and fries. My yep. my daughter anytime. What you want to eat? chicken and fries oh okay baby yeah <laughs> sure um we passed chick-fil-a she knows it she calls it the foot the foot yeah instead it, looks, of, like a it foot. looks like a foot <laughs> i love it that's funny yeah no chick-fil-a i go to chick-fil-a Kane sometimes Kane can get a little outrageous with their line and i don't i mean yeah. i don't understand how they take so long like just make a you sell one thing just make a bunch of it and let's keep it rolling. Yeah, I don't understand. It should all even if you're not making it all, it should be prepped and ready to go. Yeah. Like what are we waiting on? At yeah. most I'm waiting for it to be fried and then thrown in the fucking bag. Yeah. That uh that slider place, that small slider place that opened in Slido, yeah. that Drew owns. Uh they're pretty good too. 
they t- they take the Chick Fil A approach of sending people out, you know, and doing the order and everything. Never been there. I would check it out um, as the rain starts to fall. It's a nice ambient ambiance, whatever. Um, I'm drinking coffee, not bourbon, so I don't think I'm drunk. Um, I would go there. It seems interesting. It's an interesting concept. Uh, but I tell you what, nothing will ever defeat the greasy ass late night, um, tasty donuts. What are the, I don't remember what they're called. I'm fuck. I can't remember blanking on what they're called. Equal amounts of grease and it's real meat. (laughs) It's delicious. And if you like walk ons fries, it's just walk ons French fries with it. It's so good. I don't even know what walk on or walk ons fries like a thing. It's, It's those waffle fries. No, I'm just, if you, are they like Chick fil A fries? I mean, I used to like Chick Fil A. They're almost like even. a Cajun Chick Fil A fry. Mm, interesting. Because it's, it's got a little bit of it's got a little bit of season into it compared okay. to Chick Fil A. It's good. Anyway, I like it. I like it. All right. Do you want to keep going variety here, or do you want to jump into some I, sports nonsense? I really want to sh- fix the camera, but fix the camera. What's it looking like? It's uh. What are we looking like? No, we're good. We're just not centered. Oh, all. this fucker. Is all. Why we just, what we're we just good, hanging? man. We're good. Just, who gives a fuck? Are we good now? We're fine. All right, cool. Um, let's stay variety. You're not really a parade guy, right? This is going to be a quick one. No, I keep hearing it from my wife how I don't take my kid to parades. and So. Sorry. <laughs> I, I feel the same way. My daughter keeps saying, I want to go to a parade. I want to go to a parade. So I'm like, all right, so we're definitely going to go. We're definitely going to Mardi Gras Day, which we do every year. But um, I think we might hit Endymion this weekend. We'll see. Um, but th- what I'm getting at, or what I was going to ask, What's the best parade throw? You know how every parade these days seems to have something? What's your favorite? You have you don't have uh, one? You're asking the wrong person. Yeah. I have nothing. Like I I do not <laughs> like parades at all. <laughs> and everything about them. Don't enjoy it. I would much rather go to like an Irish Italian parade and yeah. catch some food. You know my wife says the same thing. Really? Every time. Yeah. She's like, at least at an Irish Italian parade, you're you're catching food. Like Everything I catch at a parade is going in the trash. At oh, one hundred percent. At some point, except for the cups. The cups are the best, and it's it's the best thing. I don't care what anybody says. I you, totally. You agree. can have your your coconut. Like, what am I going to do with a coconut? I don't know. Nothing. Yeah. I remember when I caught my first one. It was cool. After that, I was like, great. What am I going to do with this? Yeah. Like. <laughs> so the reason I asked is, it's right now. It's Thursday. Uh, this will probably come out on Friday or Saturday. But um, muses is tonight. Mm-hmm. I th- I feel like that's one of the most special throws right now. They do the shoes. Yeah, the shoes. Like I feel I feel like right now everyone is just they love the shoe. I, I say right now, but really for the last five ten years, like it's just been a huge thing. Like that and the Zulu coconut, obviously. But yeah. um, I think for me, I think it's just the overall theme. But Toth, like I love I love the toilet bowl. Toth is the one that does the toilet bowl, right? Like yeah. the they throw toilet paper. That and like, fun. That's a fun one. Yeah. Not the like. The toilet, th- I don't care about that, but like when they would throw the rolls of toilet paper, it's like fun. that's fun. Yeah, I yeah. like that. That's what I'm I talking like about. Uh, Anyways, that's all I got. Yeah, I am so not a Mardi Gras person. Like the far, when, and it's just like in my old age, because I used to love going to parades when I was just, when I was like in high school or even in college a little bit. Like I'd love to just go to parades with my friends and everything. And now I'm like, I don't want to, it's the people. I don't want to be around the people. Yeah. It's too many people for me. And then, in, then it's usually cold for Mardi Gras, that's, and the beads yeah. hitting your hands when it's cold is like top five worst pains in life. I was going to so. say the same thing. That's my issue, right? It's there's, So I'll go through the rabbit hole, right? It's from step one, deciding to go, okay, cool. What are we bringing? I have a three-year-old, so I'm bringing the three-year-old. What am I bringing to keep her entertained? You get to the parade. There's no parking. You have yeah. to get through traffic you, to even get thing. out then there. Then you start talking about New Orleans parades yeah. and having to try to park. you got to park two miles away. You're walking. You got to bring a wagon because then you're rolling your, yep. your daughter through the streets. Anyways, you get there. Where the fuck do you stand? There's nowhere to stand. Did you camp out for six days to get a spot? No, because that's <laughs> dumb. Who does that? Stop it. <laughs> um, then you're there. You're looking for a spot. You hope somebody has a spot for you. It's cold. It's raining sometimes. It's always raining. You got to protect your daughter. You got to keep your head on a swivel. There's drunk people everywhere. Listen, if I'm a single man and I'm just going to hang out with my friends – I'm treating it like a party, fine. Yeah. But like as as a married man with kids, I, I parades suck for See, me now. My, I don't want it. My wife is the complete opposite. Loves Mardi Gras. Like loves everything Mardi Gras. 
Now we don't like she doesn't go to New Orleans parades. They just go to all the Slido parades um, with her family. Yeah, so it's a little easier. Slightly different, you know. But even those, I'm like, I don't want to go. Like, <laughs> luckily, I've been working for all of them this year yeah. and haven't had to go. Like Celine's tomorrow night, the big Slido one, and uh, I got to be up for three at on Saturday for work. So I'm like, yeah, can't make that That's happen. <laughs> But. This this side note, this is going to be the worst quality podcast. It might be the most entertaining, like speed, like what we're I talking don't know about. I can hear that. You don't think so? It is storming right now. We're sitting on the back porch. The camera's sideways. It's wet as hell out here. We're sitting in a swamp. Is it ever going to not rain when we decide to record? This happened last week. We ended up going virtual because your daughter yeah. was sick and everything. But the night we were supposed to record, it was storming. Yeah. Like it was rough. storming, bro. Um. I don't know. We'll move on. We'll pretend it's not raining and it's not loud as fuck out here. Um, I wanted to talk Pels a little bit. We hit the all-star break. There's a lot going on that you could talk about, but there's two topics that really jump out to me. Number one, Brandon Ingram. I I'm, I wanted to talk about him specifically tonight because I'm tired of looking at Twitter or really anywhere and seeing people point out random stats that will make him look bad. When the dude has done nothing but be a phenomenal basketball player and, and have superstar abilities. It's getting old. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know how to feel about the Pels just in general right now. Like him. I, my only knock on him is availability. I have nothing bad to say about Brandon Ingram except for availability. Nothing. Like, you, I just, it, it really feels like he has no help sometimes, which is crazy considering how much depth we said the roster had at the beginning. Like, I, was, I didn't watch the Laker game yesterday. I was going to put it on, and then by the time I was going to, it looked like it was a shit show. I was like, you know what? i got better things to do with my life tonight. It was rough. So, But I saw clips of like him getting double teamed and fucking Herbs wide open in the corner and airballing the three. I'm like, what are we? Like, what is he going to do here? It's a, <laughs> like, I just I don't know how to feel about this team. I don't. I know, I know that's not what you're trying to talk yeah, about yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. but I mean, I like, but like I said, I got nothing bad to say about Bi. I love him. I I got upset when everybody wanted to trade him. I still get upset. I don't care who it's for. I'm not trading him. Like, and maybe that's not maybe that's not what would be best for the team. Down, you know, I don't know. Like maybe trading him for KD probably would have made the team a championship contender. But I want a guy that wanted to be here. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fair. I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> that's fair. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm Team BI. Um, I just wanted to come on and defend him a little bit. There's not a lot that needs to be said. I mean, he's having a phenomenal stretch here. He was hurt when he first came back. He had a couple rough games. Yeah. Now he's got his legs back under him. He's dropping 30 balls. Like, the dude can play. He gets to his spot. He's almost unguardable. There's no one around him. Well, there's people around him right now. The offense looks stagnant, though. It's, it's as you like to call, terrorist ball with one guy and then, uh, and then B.I. Like, it, 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 the ball sticks a lot. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of stuff set up. Now I'm going on a rant about just the offense in general, but uh, that's what I'm seeing as far as that goes. But I don't know. B.I. in particular, like, if we can get things heading the right way, get this offense shit figured out, where's D'Antoni? Isn't he like a, a yeah, I don't specialist know. on the staff or some shit? Like, can we get him involved somehow? Yeah, I don't know. What are we doing? They need to give Willie some more fire assistance or something. I, <laughs> I don't know. I um, love Willie as as a head coach, like a leader. But I think it's fair to question his coaching sometimes. Yeah. You know? he's. These are not excuses because you're a head coach, you're a head coach. This is the same thing I, th- I say about the Saints. It's what I say about the Pels. You are what your record says you are. You are as good as your last game. You know, all those things, right? Um, Willie's a young coach. I, I like to say he's still learning. Um, he has obviously been one to take risks. You know, he started Herb, 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 whatever, as a, uh, as a rookie. You know, he gave a lot of run to Alvarado. He gave a lot of run to a lot of guys that you normally wouldn't see happen. You know, with, with vet coaches like Alvin Gentry or back in the day like Byron Scott. Like, young guys weren't playing. No. They weren't playing. Um, so it's been kind of cool to see that and watch them develop and watch the team really come together. We wouldn't even be in the position we're in if it's not for that, right? Yeah. Um, but 
with that being said, I mean, there are things that you can rightfully question. He's, Lineups sometimes are kind of weird. He's loyal to a – he starts those guys when you might not ex- expect them to be started, but then he's also loyal to a fault. Right. Sometimes, you know, the Devontae thing was one thing. Um, it might be getting there with Herb to an extent. I mean, I don't know what the option would be to replace him at the moment, but fully held. I mean, it's just it's weird, man. With her, that's been my biggest issue, I guess, lately. Is just I don't when he plays that game where he gets to the basket, he's gr- like I love it. But he's when I understand you're wide open from three and nobody's around you, just take a cut co- like take a Close couple steps. In. Yeah, Close exactly. You don't have to take the three three right. just because it's open. Right. Like I know people complain we don't take enough threes. But that don't mean you force bad threes. Right. Granted, a wide open three shouldn't be a bad three, but that's not your game. Yeah, it's. I'm, I'm not going to hate on Herb, and I'm not in the point to where I think you need to bench him. I know a lot of people I'm not are. Try- and I, I'm I, like, I'm not trying to hate on him. I'm just. I want him to do what he's good at. Is all. Right. Um, I'm not at the point where I think you need to take him out of the starting lineup. Even I know a lot of people are. Um, I know a lot of people are, are sending some hate his way. He does so many things that don't show up on the stat sheet that, like, I'm okay with it, but I think the problem is the offense around him is not good enough to, to have a guy like that on the floor. Which then it goes back to, well, do you do you bench him? Like, I'm arguing against myself a little bit there, but um, I think you got to get the right lineup on the floor. But at the same time, it's also on Willie to, be, to get him in – Get him plays where he's not just standing in the corner getting open threes. Get him doing some cutting actions or something. Have him handle the ball. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Have like, him handle the ball. Have him run action. Like, be Draymond Green, basically. Exactly. Like that's put him what in those. I've actions. said that's what his his comp is. Really, I mean, Draymond was probably no problem with like that. at Draymond's peak, he was probably a little bit better three point shooter than Herb is right now. Right. But at the same time, Herb's only in his second year, so. Yeah. He can obviously grow, and we've seen him hit threes. Like, yeah. It can happen, and I, th- I guess – I mean, I'm assuming that's what's going on in his head when he's taking those shots. He's like, I'm wide open here. Like, I just need one to fall. Right. You know? So, I, I, I get it, but I don't know, man. It's such a it's such a killer when he takes that th- – it just kills the whole there was momentum. A, and- there was a play in the Lakers game. This is how I know I have soured a little on Herb's offense, which everybody should at this point. Like, he's proven that he can't score right now. He can't hit the three right now. He can score. He can't hit the three. Um, there was a fast break. It was a turnover. Uh, fast break. B.I.'s on the run. There's two guys in the lane, but it looks like B.I. can kind of ni- – I trust B.I. Like, I'm, I'm thinking B.I.'s attacking the rim. Herb's wide open in the corner. You probably saw this play. It's probably the one you're referencing. He throws it to Herb instead of attacking. Wide open. Air balls. Oh yeah, yeah and I'm just like, God yeah. damn it, dude! Like, and when he th- when he gave up the ball, even knowing basketball and knowing, hey, that's the right play. There's two guys in the paint. He's wide open. Kick it out. In my head, I was like, Why'd you do that? And like you said, just there attack. Was, there was two guys in the lane on bi. Catch it and then go to the rim. That's what I'm draw thinking. the foul. That's what I'm thinking. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. There's really there's nobody on this team outside of probably Trey that should be. Just standing in the corner waiting for a three. <laughs> there's not, there's nobody on the team I trust to hit a three like <laughs> like that. <laughs> Jose from time to time. Yeah. But like we just don't have anybody that I feel confident in hitting shots right now. It's tough. It is. It is a rough patch. I'm just hoping they can get hot and get rolling. Yeah. Put it together. I, I think they need, they need to find that they were they're getting their confidence back. I think, and I think that this stretch ahead of them will definitely help after the All Star break. Um. But I think losing Zion again. I think that I was I about think to that, say that th- hurts mentally. Yeah, I think they were finally getting some swagger back and getting a little bit going, and they were like, "All right, Z's coming back right. to add to it," and then, bam, you get hit with that again. That, and I'll be honest, like that just, like that makes me, from like a more macro sense, like I just looking at the team as a whole, I'm just down on it in the, on the whole situation. Not even like just this season, like long term. Like his team can't do anything if Bi and Zion can't you stay on the court. And I don't know, like we've never seen. And I'm not trying to like shit on either one of them, you know. Like sometimes it's just bad luck. Like I saw somebody post some. I guess it's a guy who does research on injuries, like hamstring injuries, had like an 81 yeah. percent um, 
re-injure or whatever yeah. it was. Right. So if I was like, you, if you look at um, Devin Booker specifically last year in the playoffs, he he hurts his hamstring, comes back against us. He's still dealing with that hamstring injury. He's missing games right now because of that same injury. Yeah. He, he's re-aggravated it multiple times. Like, it, it, shit doesn't – it, it definitely lingers. I'm already assuming Zion will never be 100% for probably the rest of the year. I mean, which is – it's okay. Like, if he's 80% of Zion, like, that's still great, you know, for a playoff for him. But it's just like – I don't know what the answer to that is. You got two stars who three years into it, we we still don't know if they can play together. Still don't know. They got losing records without each other and losing records with each other. We and then you got a third star who can be hot when he's hot, he's hot. Oh yeah. But when he's cold, it's it's awful. I just hate that the ball sticks. Yeah. And then on top on top of all of that, you got I just hate it. And that's one reason I'm I'm hesitant to like really just be super down on Willie like some people are. What is like he is constantly having to rebuild, like reimagine his offense, because, like he's never got his players. Yeah. Like he's he came into the season you'd imagine with an offense built around Bi and Zion, then he loses Bi, and it's just Zion, then he loses <laughs> both of them, and then he loses Zion. <laughs> it's like one after another. He loses CJ for a little while. Like this is it's crazy how much he has to deal with. Yeah. I just I don't know, man. From a I just I'm the excitement of the beginning of the season is completely gone for me. It definitely is. I'll be honest. Um, I mean, I'm still I'm still like you're gonna go as far as Zion's gonna take us at the, at this point. Like he has to come back. If he can't come back, you make the playoffs. I think like you're gonna make the playoffs, but you're fighting for a play in. Um, you I, you'd be lucky to finish as a six seed. I I think without Zion, we're a play in team. I think so too, but like. The and pl- not, I mean, and not the one, not the one in the playoffs already. <laughs> like I'm thinking, oh, you think like like nine? I think 10? same same as last year. I don't know if we're like nine, ten. We're nine right now. No, I know, but we're trending upwards. We're nine right now. We played like, what, what do we run through three and two in our last five or something like that? I'm just saying, like we had a bad stretch where all of our players were out. I think now, at least with Bi and CJ and everybody else around them, coming out of the All Star break with that lot with that. Um, that schedule that we have left, I think, like, seven seed, which All is still right. playing. So let's talk about this whole easy schedule thing. Okay. If you look at that, the graphic of it, it's got Lakers twice, not as easy as it was. That Lakers team is different than what it was. It's definitely different. It's a good. That's a that's a playoff team. Yeah. That roster is a playoff roster. Yeah, it's a seven. It's a six seven. Some Pels like fans us. will still sit here and say they're not. Oh they no, are. no, they, they absolutely are. are. And then. Then it had the Magic, I think, twice. That's a good team too. I know their record. Yeah. Like they they are on the, they've been on a nice little run. There they were on a nice little run. I don't know if they still were, but like when they beat us the last time, they had they were hot. Like that's a good team. That's not going to just be some team you can. I mean, a healthy Pels team should beat them. Right. But it's a good team. It's not like a bunch of scrub teams. They're I just mean, going based off a record, and I don't like that. Okay. Some teams are better than what their record. Say. Yeah, and some teams are worse than what their record says. But but at the end of the day, I'm going to say what I said earlier. You are what your record says you are. And it's the NBA. Everybody's professional. Every, like, no game's a gimme, right? You just expect that with that stretch of teams who have bad records, that things would continue that way. I just think people look at that and they're like, oh, we played the Lakers twice. That's a e- that's easy games. We play Orlando. Orlando's a good team. Like, anybody wants to argue me against that, that's fine. But – they're they're a solid team. I can't even think of who's on the team other than Paolo. Uh, Jalen Suggs, Wagner went for some. Well, now they don't have Mobamba, so he's gone. Bamba's not good. He sure the hell tore us apart. He didn't tear us apart. He, he embarrassed looked okay. Us. He he embarrassed us. <laughs> Did you even watch but the anyway, game? Anyway, <laughs> they're a better team than they're a better they're a better team than people give them credit for. It just I don't know, man. I don't like this whole looking at the strength of schedule just based on record. I don't like it. I mean, it's fair. It's like fair. It. But at the end of the day, it, it like nothing's a gimme. Like I said, like you just hope that because of what's left, that you have a good opportunity. I'll leave it at that. Um, we've exhausted the Pels talk. There was one more thing I wanted to talk about Pels related. Is it time? 
to to have a conversation with JV and say, hey, dude, like maybe we need to come off the bench. Maybe maybe you need to just take some games off and heal up. Something's clearly wrong, if you ask me. I don't know. I mean, I think – has he not still been fine offensively when Willie decides to play him? Defensively, he it is what it is with him. Like, that's not going to – ain't nothing you can do about it. Like, <laughs> he, you, it's on the coaches to try to put him in a better position because if he keeps getting, you know, switched on to at the three-point line, it's over with. Yeah. You know, it's – Offensively, he's he's a top ten center in the league. Offensively, in a poor league, I mean, there's no good centers in the league anyway. So saying top ten doesn't really mean much. Is he a dominant low post force? Yes, one hundred percent. Is he a dominant scoring big? Yes, but it doesn't lend itself to success for this team apparently. And I like he doesn't look as dominant as he was. He has stretches. Right, he has some good stretches, but he misses a lot of bunnies, like a lot of a lot of easy ones. Like I, I don't know. Like he looks a little slower to me. It looks like he's lumbering up and down the court. Like I feel like he's probably hurt and just run down. That's why I was like, or the second part. Like, do you just need to tell him like sit out a little bit? Like let's get Maybe some. He just let's needs get some all-star break. <laughs> planned off days. Yeah, you know, the whole team needs the all-star break for sure. But I don't know. I. I love JV. I just I'm not a fan of like all right. So what you you start you start Larry. JV still JV doesn't play starter minutes. Just, That's fair. You know what I mean? Like, what's the difference in him coming off the bench? You just playing him Mindset. with a different. I mean, maybe if you're playing him with a different fast start. Like it's you know like that's all I can think like. You don't get played off the floor I in the first five ju- minutes. It should just be matchup based. There's some guy like. So the Lake this game's a little different because Larry was out. So, but like when we play the Lakers, that should be a Larry game because he just matches up better with. Yeah, I agree. With it AD, was, it was hard to watch. I mean, there were times where if we had any type of rim protection, that defense looks a lot better. But there's times where I watch JV sees what's happening and he tries to come across the lane and like play any type of defense and he just can't get there. And yeah. I'm like, damn, dude, like, come on. But that's always been the case. Yeah. Like, we never – we didn't get JV thinking he was going to be – No, I know. You know what I, I mean? I know. I just – I don't – like, I get what you're saying, but I I don't think it should be as simple as, all right, we're going to start Larry from now on. Because I do think there's matchups where it's a Jonas matchup, and they just don't play through him. Like, you can hear – even, like, AD on the broadcast, you can hear him all the time saying, like, this is a game where we should play through Jonas, and they just Whoa. don't. I mean, that's fair. Listen, there's a lot of games. If he's on the floor, you should be playing through him. Yeah. If it's him and CJ, like when we had that stretch where it was basically just them two, it should have been high-low. Play old-school th- basketball. There's not a lot of – like you're saying, it's a, weak, it's a weak center league. There's not a lot of big men in the game that can handle him. Yeah. You know? I mean, you, you talk about, like, the top teams in the West. In the playoffs, it's going to be tough, I think, for JV. Because they all, if you look at all the teams, most of them have a pretty good big man. So maybe it gets a little tough for him then. But I don't know. Like, there's just some games where it should be his game, and it don't. They don't seem to use him. But then at, at other times, like with the Lakers, it should be a Larry game. And that's when you talk to JV and be like, "Look, it just ain't you know this matchup ain't for you." Yeah. No, I I think just for me, like I'm maybe I'm just throwing shit at the wall, hoping something sticks right now. You know, because we are in that weird. Weird place yeah. where it's I mean, not as exciting. We need something. That's. I mean, that is. There's something to that also, though. Like if you maybe you try it, it just like fuck. You never give know, Jack man. some minutes, not start him, but like give right. Jacks more minutes. Like let's let him get in there. We need a athletic big that can run the floor and yeah. Like well, it goes. It kind of it kind of mixes in with like the herb conversation. Like like if we if Dyson was healthy. Would there ever be a, a point where you're like, all right, maybe we just try Dyson yes. as a starter, you know, yeah. and see yeah. how it goes? For sure. I think Dyson is definitely uh, – it's like you could make that argument yeah. that Dyson should be in the starting lineup when healthy. I think – and I, I mean, I think there's games where, like, Kyra should come in over Jose. Like, there's different – it's it, it's all – Yeah. That, and that's all on – So you want to revisit that Willie conversation and talk about how hard it is? I was just <laughs> about to say, you know, it's – it's a coaching <laughs> thing. It's it's all Willie to be like, all right. It's tough. This is a, it's tough, but it's what the good coaches recognize. And yeah. That's where he's got to grow. He's got to figure out. I think that's 
for me, that's the hardest part is figuring out what your playoff rotation is or what your eight man it's rotation da- is. You know, it's the downside of being such a deep team. Right. Like people are gonna because the Pels have been down lately. Like all of a sudden, the same people that were on Twitter saying we were a super deep team are like, "Oh, y'all said we were a deep team, and now we're losing with these guys." Like, yeah, we're deep when everybody's healthy. Right. You know, but like. It's the downside of having this many good players. Right. Like he's never going to be able to play them all in a in a normal rotation. So you got to pick and choose the matchups, and hopefully you got guys that are like if Jose doesn't get minutes because it's a better Kyra game. Hopefully Jose's like all right, I understand. Yeah. I'll get mine when I get it. You yeah, know? you hope they don't lose their edge. And you that's, would yeah, and you would hope JV as a veteran understands that too. Yeah, but that's fair. I don't know. All right, put a bow on that. That was a nice Pels talk. We jumped everywhere. Hopefully there was some content in there that people enjoy. Um, what else we got? There was a big, big football game last weekend. There was. It was a big football game. Did you watch it? I did. Yeah? I did watch it. Yeah? Uh, Are you excited with the outcome? Um, I'm cool with it. I don't, I, like we, we talked about it. I didn't really have a dog in the fight. Yeah. I was more so pulling for my bets, and that was about it. Okay. It was fun. Um, one of the better ones in recent it was good. It was good. Um, I had more fun watching the halftime show, I'll be honest. It was um, a good halftime show. I was excited. I found myself all throughout the game just waiting on the halftime show, waiting on Rihanna. <laughs> Judge me if you may. I mean, listen, um, just banger after banger. After oh, banger. just hit after hit after hit. I was talking to a friend of mine today, and she's like, you know, I didn't. I was telling my friends, like, I didn't think I was really going to like the halftime show. I don't even know any of Rihanna's songs. She's like, and then Rihanna gets on. I know every single song. (laughs) She's like, I'm singing word for word. The halftime show ends, and she's like, I think Rihanna might be better than Beyonce. And they're like, oh, yeah, you go from not even knowing her songs to now she's better than Beyonce? Like, But no, she's got got a lot of hits. Um, It was a good show, especially considering the pregnancy announcement and all that. I love that the whole world was, like, trying not to be rude, (laughs) but also was kind of like, that was a she she's made pregnant, it as right? Obvious that she possibly could. That's what I that's what I told Victoria. I was like, that was pretty obvious. Like she, like she ru- wasn't she's rubbing, rubbing her belly. belly. Like, like, yeah, I just had a big hamburger. I don't know. Right. I, and <laughs> I even told my wife, I was like, you know, I, I did have that like that guilt though, because I saw her in interviews before the Super Bowl, and I was like, oh, maybe she just you know never lost a baby because I noticed she was still a little a little chubby. I was like, oh, you know, it's it's hard. It's hard. You know, I've, I've my wife had a child. I know how hard it can be for for people to to lose that weight. Um, but no, when she announced, I was like, oh. I told my wife. That makes sense. I don't want to hear you complain about being pregnant anymore because Rihanna was out there running around on stage. <laughs> yeah, she was 150 <laughs> feet in the air on a platform that was not stable, Granted. if you remember. Granted, my wife is nine months and Rihanna's well, probably you know what? three. <laughs> don't, don't you dare give her excuses, okay? Right. <laughs> uh, no. No, as far as the game goes, that was a I, – dude, that was fun. That was a fun game. Like, cool. that game lived up to – it really – it felt like – honestly, if whatever team would have won, it would have felt like the best team in the league won. Yeah. All year, those two teams were the two top teams. And it, it – the only thing I was worried about coming into the game was the Eagles had like a somewhat easy, easy path coming in, it felt like. They had a couple excuses. They ran in the – like they got through San Francisco with a with Josh Johnson – yeah, that was crazy. Like they did, they had some luck. So I was like, I hope that they live up to with Josh what Johnson. They are. Let's let's call a spade a spade. It wasn't just getting through with Josh Johnson. They had to put a guy back in who couldn't even throw the ball because they Josh Johnson pl- got hurt. They ran plays with McCaffrey. That's what I'm saying. Like they basically McCaffrey threw a pass. Yeah, like they didn't even have a quarterback <laughs> yeah. at the end of the game. So I was worried about that coming in, but no, it lived up to it, man. I mean, say what you will about the penalty at the end. To I guess that's the only damper on it, but yeah. You know, it's tough. That's a lose lose for the refs there. I'm gonna be honest. Like a lot of people, even myself, if you go look at my Twitter, I was upset. I was I was very upset in that moment. I was like, dude, how do you call that? Like that's a ticky tack foul. Looking back, it's a penalty. Yeah, it's just but, the fact that they hadn't called anything like that. Right. All there was no holding calls like that all game long. If they don't call it, then the other side's like, What how can't you why don't you call that? Yeah, but that's gonna happen no matter what. Yeah. Every play I mean, you're gonna get ten calls or ten plays a game where fans are on there like, Oh, this was holding and this was that. So you're gonna get in that. In that regardless. moment, in that big of a game, how do you not call that call? Who does that sound like? Where does that come from? Yeah. I'm just saying, like, there's it's you know <laughs> Yeah, but that was it wasn't as egregious. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> but Um How do you feel about the whole uh, hindsight, obviously, it was the right decision. 
McKinnon falling down on the one to play for the field goal and the win. Oh, I 100. percent In that moment, I thought it was the right decision. I un- no, I understand that it's the right decision. I think like the cynical fan of me, if if I was a Chiefs fan, I think I'd have been. I think I would have been sitting there like, just score the touchdown and hope for the to make a stop because. I like I, don't, I just maybe it's just me not trusting kickers. Like that, that's he had fair. already he had already missed the one. The field was absolute garbage. They were slipping all over True. the place. They were slipping all the kickoffs. I'm just in my head. I'm just they were up eight. So the worst that could happen was overtime. I'm like in my head. I'm like just just go into that. <laughs> but it is the it is the right call. But as a fan, I think I'd have been if that was the Saints. I think I'd have been sitting there like. Just score. Please just score. Like, imagine being in that position if it's your team. I feel the opposite, to be completely honest. I feel the opposite. If he goes in right there, if I'm a Saints fan and it's the Saints and they do that, I'm like, fuck, why'd you score so fast? Now they have time. Yeah. Leave them no chance. But if he doesn't go in, you play the field goal and miss the field goal. Then they got the ball on the th- then you, but then with you, way then less time. You sit, yeah, but then you know you're sitting there like, well, would they have been, was it tied at that point? I think it was tied. You think so? I, think I don't know if they were up or tied. I think it was tied. Um, but if you like, if you lose because you missed the field goal for the next till the end of the season or till the next season, you're like, all you had to do was go with the end zone. That's true, <laughs> but it is it's the right play. It's a smart play. Like I agree with it 100. percent When he went down like that, I said, "Oh, the Chiefs just won the game." Like no question. At first, I was like, "Oh, if if they score here quick, the Eagles still have a chance." But when he went down, I was like, oh, they're gonna, now they're going to run clock and they're going to kick a field goal and the game's over. And even if they don't make the field goal, they go to overtime. Like, I think, that, I yeah. think it was – I'm pretty sure it was tied at that I point. I don't remember. Um, th- my biggest takeaway from that game, it's so fun watching good offenses. It's, oh, it's so fun, It's a dude. lot of fun. Those two, those two cr- offenses are so creative and so fun to watch. It really makes me hate Pete Carmichael. <laughs> <laughs> so much. Like <laughs> – I was I'm watching that and it's not even like the there's just it's not even like the craziest plays. Like that little fake Whoa. jet sweep that they scored twice on where they fake the jet sweep and he the receiver. Oh, zig route? It's yeah. like a, it's, like it's, a, it's almost it is like it's, a a, it's somewhat of a zig route, but in the post game they were saying the enemy would c- came into the meets and meetings and said that they bite hard on the jet yeah. sweep. Oh, of course. So that's that's what it was. It's just a fake jet sweep with a little zig route. Right. And like it's such a simple play. But yet it's so creative. Why can't we do that? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, we will. I guarantee you, you'll see it next year. I don't. I don't you'll see, you're going to see every team in the league try that at some point, except for probably the Saints because yeah, because they're going to fucking need to run that. the same six plays the whole game. Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, that was my main takeaway. <laughs> Baker Mayfield is going to be back there. Yolo. We just throw this bitch up. Whatever, man. Let's be nice. Let's live dangerously. Um, but I had some crawfish. That was a good. I had some crawfish when we uh, oh for the Super Bowl for the yeah. Super Bowl yeah uh, I made some little pork bites and burnt ends that was good nice uh, I hit a couple bets that was also good mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried boiled crab for the first time so that was an experience the first how old are you twenty nine Jesus here's Christ. what you need to understand about me I I already understand everything I need um, to my well, my mom eats seafood but I grew up with my with my grandma living in her house she doesn't eat seafood. Mm. So you're a sheltered young man. Yes, I only eat shrimp and crawfish because well, my mom loves crawfish and shrimp. So my mom got me eating crawfish. I only eat shrimp from playing baseball, and I would stay at my friends' houses sometimes for tournaments, mm-hmm. and they would have shrimp, so I would eat it. Okay, so that's the only reason that I eat shrimp and crawfish. Uh, but yeah, I never had crab. Also, it, after having crab, not worth it. Not worth the work. For it to taste almost exactly like crawfish to okay. me. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> it does not taste like it was, crawfish. It was so. It was similar. <laughs> it's not a different enough taste. Well, it's the same seasoning. That's why it's similar. Okay, so my it's still my point is still going to stand. For a tenth of the work, I can have the same thing. I'll say with this. Crawfish. I'll say this. I agree. <laughs> I I agree with your viewpoint. It's a lot of work. You get more meat through the, from the crab. The the crab meat I think is way better though. Like blue crab is sweet. It's like there's a sweetness to it that if you once you once you do it enough, because the first time it's like man this is fucking tedious. Like I don't feel like peeling all these crabs like this. I, it's a lot of work for a little bit of meat. Once you get 
in a routine and a rhythm with it, it's faster. Like the first time you ate crawfish, probably. I had probably. this opinion when I wasn't even the one that peeled the crab. Oh, that's fair. So <laughs> I watched somebody else is. who is good at do who does it, and I'm like, all right, there's no way, there's no chance that I'm ever doing this. <laughs> It's like, not, if somebody else wants to peel it for me, then I'll probably eat it again. But if not, I'm not doing all that. I'll be honest. I'm, I don't go out of my way to boil crab. I don't go out of my way to order boiled crab. Um, but I do enjoy it. Like, I think I think it's got a place. Yeah. No, I mean, you can go places and just order crab claws, and they pretty much come already. Yeah. Uh, already peeled sometimes, so that would be fun. But other than that, nope. Not for no, me. It's, all right, that's all right. Not, they didn't, I'm, they, I'm not saying they didn't taste good, because they did. I just don't think it's worth the work. That's my uh, TED Talk. Thanks for coming. I mean, hey, I don't disagree. I only disagree with the fact that you, you think they taste the same. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not saying this exact same. It is a similar taste. And it, like you're saying, it probably is the seasoning. But like how often – I know people do it. But for the most part, you'd be like, hey, I'm boiling cr- crawfish. Let's throw some crabs in. Some people do that. My dad does that. So, so it's because my sister th- doesn't eat. Like a lot of times, there's people that don't eat crawfish. They only eat crabs. Yeah. So it's fair. Um, no, we um, we had we were man, we got sick right before the Super Bowl. Mm. So like, I, normally I'll I'll have an idea of like I was gonna make smash burgers and do some other stuff on the grill and just kind of cook a couple things, but um, they were sick. I I was kind of kind of sick. Not really. My stomach was just killing me. Um, but we ended up getting pizza. Which, I don't, like, I was looking for good pizza around here, and, like, I don't know if it exists. Like, pizza's always good. Don't get me wrong. It's always good. Like, pe- bad pizza is still good. But, like, I don't know. I want to find, like, a really good pizza spot around here. We went to McLean's. Okay. That one I shared the picture of. McLean's. It's on the lakefront. Um, oh yeah yeah i've heard of that place we didn't good. even try that place very good okay now i mean if you're one of those people who just doesn't like greasy pizza then no not for you it, it depends it was very greasy but like i'm talking you could pick it up and it was just pouring I, off i but it was delicious <laughs> i like two kinds of pizza i'm actually not like a hand toss or new york style guy in general i know those are two kind of different things but i consider them to be somewhat similar they're not the same but anyways um, I like a thin, like crispy crust. Um, I like a wood fire, but it's got to be thin, or like, or the complete opposite. Like, I like a deep dish, which isn't even pizza. If you ask a lot of people, yeah. it's, it's lasagna. Yeah, there's also Pizza but, Man by my house. Okay, probably the best out here. Okay, hands down. Like, I'm not. I say probably it is. Okay, they're only open after four, and it's actually if you're gonna eat it, take your daughter there because they got. It's set up to where they can like stand there and watch them make the pizzas. Sweet. It's cool. That's a good place. That's probably my favorite. Shout out Pizza Man. We do accept sponsorships. Yes. So, if you're listening. Also, change your hours because I need lunch sometimes. <laughs> uh, what else good you got shit. to talk about? Because it's like 45 minutes and you said we had a bunch of things. No, <laughs> I mean, we could go off on tangents and stuff, but like that was, that was the gist of it. That was the stuff I wrote down. Um, uh, while we're talking Super Bowl, we kind of talked about this a little bit on Twitter. A little back and forth i guess mm-hmm. patrick mahomes i just yeah. want to have this conversation yes I, you know where i'm going with this yes end of, end of is conversation. he is he a hall of famer already yes yeah yeah 100 percent. i don't see how he couldn't be he's won two super bowls did you think he would have been had he not won the super bowl uh i think you could have argued it i think without the second super bowl he's a hall of famer but not first ballot right like it's it's tough because he's only played so many years right but like his years have been so dominant that it's like that's the thing like and that's kind of what our conversation was on twitter like what is what what makes somebody a hall of famer is it just the numbers or is it when you watch them you're like all right yeah like like you just know like i mean he's he's gonna he's in that calvin johnson range right because he didn't play a whole bunch he played more years than mahomes is right now but he didn't have a long career so like i don't i don't know for sure but i would assume calvin johnson's career numbers are not like in the top yeah i don't know you know whatever but if you look at him year by year you're like jesus christ like this dude was so dominant yeah you know and it's just, you just Calvin watched. still had a decently long yeah career. no no that's i'm not trying to say but he as in terms of people of his level it was a short career yeah what do you play eight years or something like that that's what i think i want to say nine yeah but i'm not i'm not sure but i mean if you compare him to like andre johnson i think andre johnson's career was a little bit longer mm-hmm 
I mean, all, I guess all you missed with – I guess with Calvin, the thing was he fe- I felt like he was still – Oh, he's at the top of his game. Still. Yeah. He could have played three more years for sure at that yeah. high level. Like, yeah, so it's like – For sure. But it's the same situation where you just watched him and you're like, all right, I didn't need to see more than five years to know <laughs> right. this guy's a Hall of Famer. And that's, where, that's how I am with, with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And I told somebody else this. Like, I, don't, I think the numbers, like, ten years from now, if Patrick Mahomes plays ten more years, all his numbers are going to do – is justify what we think right now. Yeah. Like, we already think, yeah, this guy is possibly the the best quarterback we've ever seen play the game. And he, <laughs> like, like, he's one of those guys that, like, he's almost like this, the modern day, if I can make a comparison to the NBA, he's like the Steph Curry of the NFL right now. Yeah. He's playing a style that you've never seen before. You could say you've seen it before, but it's it's not. Like his style is very different from even some of the other mobile quarterbacks you've seen. Yeah. Um I think First Take actually had that a, a conversation about that today is who made their game more exciting, Steph or Mahomes. Okay. Interesting. I think, I think Steph personally. Uh, because Mahomes is Mahomes. Like there is nobody else that is Patrick Mahomes in the NFL. But there are other quarterback like like Lamar is, is excited. Like can be just as exciting as Mahomes yep. in his own way. But Lamar's like Michael Vick was. Like you've seen Lamar before. Yeah, I don't. I feel like there's more people that are. I don't know how to say this. Like there's, what we've said it before. There's one other person in the NBA that can do what Steph does. Yeah, but Dang. not even not even like at the same level, right. but like but slightly. The only person that could possibly be in the conversation right, right. now is Dame. But they still draft people that, like, right. they're still trying to find right. that guy. With Mahomes, it's like, I don't think there's anybody in the league that can beat Patrick Mahomes. Right. But there are other quarterbacks that are closer to that tier, if that makes sense. Like, you got, like, we're... You got, I'm gonna shoot down anyone. You I just say. I don't know I don't know what I'm trying to <laughs> how to word what I'm trying to say. Like there's nobody that is Patrick Mahomes. It is Mahomes and then everybody else. But Lamar is his own version of being electric. For sure. Burrow is for sure. When he gets in that mode, it's crazy. Absolutely. Josh Allen, at the t- when he's on his like yes. that's there's there's so many different unique styles of quarterbacking. Yeah, you could lump all those together. I'll give you that. Like Josh Allen, Mahomes, even Burrow. Burrow's not Burrow's mobile, but he's in a different way, you know. Um, and they're all very good. It's just I feel like Mahomes is is better. Even Jalen Hurts, yeah, is his own version of. It's just that I think there's more exciting quarterbacks than there are. It's I guess it's weird with basketball because there's obviously exciting basketball players. But I'm trying to th- – like, there's nobody that does what Steph does, even no. close to it. No. Like, Dame is – we say close, but he's not close to what to what Steph is. And there's just – I just think there's other people that can be up there with Patrick Mahomes as far as the entertainment level. When Steph – when Steph gets in that mo- – when Steph was at peak Steph, yeah, that was must watch. That was must-see TV. See, I, I – I mean, yes, like – Steph at P. Steph is fucking insane. Like probably one of the most exciting basketball players I've ever seen. And then, dude, and I'm thinking about that, that for a second. Like, yes, I'll I'll double down on that. Probably one of the most exciting basketball players I've ever seen. It kind of goes into the conversation we had, like Steph and LeBron, like who had more impact. Like, do kids are kids like worshiping Patrick Mahomes like they do Steph? I don't think so. I think it's totally it's a different. I guess culture. It, it it is different with football. This is a like an age old conversation of how football players just aren't as recognizable and right and everything because of the helmets. But Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Like for if sure. You, like if a kid saw Patrick Mahomes walking down the street, he would probably know that that's who it is. But I just I start looking at it as who had more of an impact on their game, and I think it, I just think it's Steph. Well, it's definitely Steph. But I, I was just making the comparison. I I think Mahomes like you compare you compare him to Josh Allen, you compare him to Lamar, you compare him to any of those guys. Mahomes' style is so much different, even than Josh Allen. Josh Allen's probably the closest if I had to compare anyone. But Josh Allen's so much more of like a power guy. I, I feel like Mahomes is so – it's like watching art. Like it's it's insane. The the passes he throws from the arm angle he throws them. Yeah, this is going to be kind of a, a weird thing to say. Bat Stafford is probably closer to Mahomes' passing style than – 
Josh Allen. You're talking because of arm, like, like his the arm. whole arm. Like Stafford yeah. does all of that crazy shit with his arm. Yes, and everything. But Mahomes does it while on the Mo- run. Yeah, yeah, which is insane. Yeah, because that's what that's actually what I loved about Stafford. That's why I was such a Stafford fan when I was when you and I had that conversation back, you know, six months ago or whatever it was. Um, which now I'm on your side. I think he's washed. Um, <laughs> I wanted the long run. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, like it's so. That's why it's so exciting. The dude can do things with his arm that nobody else in the league can do, and do it on the run. Yeah. While falling down, he hits people in the face mask. Like it's like how? Yeah, I don't. It's just it's fun. I mean, both of them are like. That's that is one like a one to one comparison to be honest, from sport to sport, it's I don't I think you're gonna see more of like the Patrick Mahomes style coming you into will. the league. Well, they're they're looking it's that for that flag it. football style. It's 100 percent flag football style. That's, that's that's what I see it. And um, you're gonna you can watch if you watch all these seven on seven kids going into college like that style is coming. Yeah, well they tried to get it with Zach Wilson and it. Yeah. Oh, the arm talent, the arm angles, and all this, this and that. And then he gets in the league and he's like, mm. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Not that guy. Yeah, it's gonna be. That's and that's. What, I think that is when you'll be able to know <coughs> of the two, like because they, like you said, they tried to draft guys like Steph. They drafted Trey because he had that right somewhat again Trey Young. Cause yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I knew they, who you meant though. They drafted him because of that, and they're gonna start doing the same thing. What you, you're gonna see it? All these cool kids are gonna come out and be like, "This guy's got the Patrick Mahomes in him," and will he or will he not? That's fair. And eventually somebody else is going to come out and revolutionize it and they're going to do something else and then it's well, just Well, yeah, eventually you're going to get the guy that can run like Lamar and throw the ball like Mahomes and then it's going to break the, the game. Well, fair. <laughs> that's I mean that's all, that is the that's the end game right there. <laughs> right. All right, uh, you want to you want to end this with a bad hot take? <laughs> yeah, go for it. A really bad hot take. Okay. The other night I'm uh I'm talking with some buddies of mine. You mentioned earlier that you'll be on Call of Duty and y'all just have random conversations off the wall. So we're talking about Jalen Hurts. We're talking about Lamar. We're talking about all these quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And um, and then they're comparing how bad the Saints quarterbacks are. And they're like, man, if they could just find like a Jalen Hurts type or run an offense with Jalen Hurts. And I'm like, you know what's funny? I know something really funny. There's a guy on the Saints roster that can totally run that offense. <laughs> totally run that offense. Real, real quick, because I don't want to forget about this. They're talking about banning the Eagles quarterback. That's the sneak. dumbest thing in the world. You don't, you don't I think they should it. either? No. I, I'm with it's you. football. I'm with you. Sean said that he would run it every game yeah. if they don't. And I, and I said, okay, run it every game. Yeah, <laughs> like, you ain't the Eagles. You know what's right. You, and that's the thing. <laughs> you, that's the Russ, thing. Russ is not. There's a reason every team in the league doesn't right. do it. Now, I, they're, I, it's. Like, football's not supposed to be easy. No. Now, granted, the, that makes it easy, the fact that they can all just get behind the quarterback and push. But if you watch the Eagles, they get it without the whole push yeah. thing. Like, fourth and one, the offense should be able to get Yo, fourth and I, one. I said it during the Super Bowl. I think I said it in the second quarter. I said, should the Eagles just run the quarterback sneak <laughs> every play? They, every and they get play. so fun. Like, dude, they run when it's just jammed up in the middle. They do what I never understand why people don't do. They just run the little... It didn't work yeah. in the Super Bowl, but they do it all the time where they just, okay, flip, <laughs> and, and right. then they run it to the outside. If you can get – I mean, this is the age-old question, right? If you can average three yards a carry, which they, they probably could on the quarterback sneak, it's that it's that good, yeah. run it every fucking play. Run it on fourth down. Keep it going. Right. If I they mean, ain't stopping it. Because that's – like, are you going to are you gonna start saying if a running back gets jammed up at the line, like nobody should come push him anymore? Right. Because nobody complains about that, but now we're complaining it because the Eagles showed it off in the Super Bowl that, hey, we could get this one yard and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> like, I don't know. Of course, Sean's going to try to fucking ruin it because. He ruins everything. He is ruining everything. It's fucking everything, man. Stop taking our coaches and take the one we don't want. <laughs> Call up Pete. Jesus. Hey, Pete, I could use your face. Right. <laughs> that's yeah. all I got. That's all I got too. We're at an hour, so. All right, I won't. I won't this hype up Taysom Taysom Hill anymore. I'll stop. <laughs> I cut you off there. I'm yeah, sorry. He was like, "No, we're not even fucking doing that." 
That's fair. I'm sorry. It's fair. It wasn't because you were about the hype of Taste of Hill. Oh, I, I do agree with you. <laughs> like, well, it's funny because, and we'll end it on this. It's funny because there's a guy in that party that's like, he's so sick of people talking about Taste of Hill. <laughs> he's a Cowboys fan. He actually, he interacts with us on Twitter all the time. He's a good buddy of mine. Um, and he's like, come on. I'll leave it back you up to the point where I'll say this. Even though we've seen some Taysom Hill, I still, right now, would like to see an entire season of it with a good offensive coach. If we coach, can't get a quarterback creative, next year, I want Taysom Hill. With a creative offensive coach. That's it. That's all I want. Like, just who, and for better or worse, I don't even care. Don't don't say, all right, if he has a couple bad games, we're going to pull it. No, fuck just that. Just ride yeah, it. Yeah, just ride it till the wheels like, fall off <laughs> and then draft a good quarterback in the offseason like, and call it a day. I don't even care. Like, people are going to say, no, we shouldn't do that because the team's not going to be good. Newsflash. <laughs> right. Ex- exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's where I'm at. And I felt that way halfway through the season. If your team sucks, at put least, Taysom Hill in. Just say fuck it. At least be fun. Like, that's, that is our whole point. Like, at least be fun. It's <laughs> funny. I, and I have another friend in the party who's a, he's a diehard Saints fan. He's a good guy. He's like, man, I don't know. Taysom Hill, he's got an arm. And I sat there for a second, I paused, and I'm like, yeah, Taysom Hill's got two arms, believe it or not. (laughs) Don't mean neither one of them motherfuckers work. (laughs) But his legs do. (laughs) Always. So, (laughs) no, I'm with you. That would be fun. Until next time, (laughs) on the Taysom Hill Show. On the Taysom Hill Show. No, that's it. Uh, Follow us at the Patty V. At the Dave Rainey. Um, At who effing knows everywhere. Um, also follow at be in the know on Twitter and who and knows on Twitch because we'll be streaming Patty's. Uh, we will. You'll games. probably see. Uh, there's probably going to be one maybe late tonight, which you guys won't see this until tomorrow. So you missed it. Um, and there'll probably be one Friday. Maybe You'll probably see two a week. So maybe just I'll look start for playing them. some games on there a little bit, but you should probably let me know when you need it. <laughs> yeah. <The account. laughs> I don't have to always be the streamer for for our games, but it's easiest. Um, but yeah. Until next time, that's all we got. That's it. <laughs> <Deuces>. <laughs>